Hello and welcome back again to River Valley Farm. Anyway, today uh, I'm one day out basically of picking up the rain from Hurricane Florence. And uh, somebody asked me to do kind of a tractor tour or an equipment tour type of video. So, uh, farm all lover, this is for you. I'm um, not going to go in any particular order here just because I'm not. Anyway, we have our 1938 Farmall F20. Um, my dad bought this tractor a few years ago. Um, he bought it from a family about 20 miles up the road. Uh, I don't know a whole lot of history on it other than to say that it is in completely original condition. Um, I have made a couple of different videos about this tractor. Uh, if you want to look back through my archives, you can uh, kind of get a better feel of what I know about this thing. Um, it's a very complete and very original tractor though. Uh, I don't even think that the engine's ever been a part on it and it runs just like it's supposed to. Over here we have the 1977 International Cub. Now this is something here that dad bought or I think traded for actually. Um, it was being, it was uh, in the next uh, county over and it was used to cultivate tobacco and other small crops pretty much all of its life dad picked it up and I mean it had been sitting outside uh, the guy apparently didn't know what a bolt was it needed some work let's just say um, now I uh, fixed it up what little was done to it I did it I fixed it up painted it did all that good stuff it uh, does work it does what it's supposed to do i mean you know it's it's still a cub technically this is the new international cub i don't know there's not a whole lot of difference and there's not a whole lot of information on them after uh like i think 1965 was the last time they tested one at nebraska but this is a new and improved version of the same old tractor they made in 19 47 48 whenever they started making cubs now something to be said for this that i don't know um i was under the impression that in from 76 to 79 when they stopped making cubs that all the tractors were red now i've just been informed that that was not the case some were yellow some were red nobody really knows how many of each were made but anyway that's uh, what they come up with. And wow, oh, right there is my nemesis, the 961 Ford Power Master. Um, I just don't like it. That's about all I can say for that. Whatever, a little loader on it, stuff like that. It's kind of useful for certain things, but other things not so much. Here we have the 1948 Farmall C with the one bottom two way plow on it. Um, I bought this one at an auction, consignment sale, and uh, let's see, 2006 or seven probably. Um, it didn't have a speck of paint left on it but I'm pretty sure it was bought new with a two row cultivator and it was never taken off. Um, I'm not, you know, it sat outside and what have you, but I mean, we literally brought it home and uh, it went real, it went real cheap at the time because it wouldn't start, cranked wouldn't start, or actually it wouldn't even crank, it didn't even have a battery on it when I bought it, but Anyway, I stuck the, uh, it had the hand crank with it still. I stuck it in and turned the engine over and uh, pretty much got it cheap, loaded it up, brought it home, put a set of points and a condenser in it, 
stuck a battery on it, fresh gas fired up, ran like it does now. So, yeah. Um, the two bottom one way, or the one, one bottom two way plow here, I don't remember the model number, but it was actually bought new with that 1950 Model C that belonged to my grandfather. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, the goal was, is we had this plow, uh, a one row set of cultivators, the two row set of cultivators that came with this tractor, um, a sycamore a disc, I don't really even remember what all C implements we have around here, but we had, you know, enough you could farm with a C, basically. And that was the goal, is we were going to have a fleet of C's, one with this plow, one with a two-row cultivator, one with a one-row cultivator. Uh, there's a planter, or no, wait, there is not a planter anymore. We got rid of that. We had an actual uh, two-row mounted corn planter, the one that mounted ahead of the, or mid-mounted mid corn planter that went with this, went for, with one and all kinds of other stuff, but uh, dreams never came to fruition, so here we are, we have two C's and that's pretty much it. Um, this one here is the 1940 Farmall B. Um, it is in its original condition too, as best as I know. I'm not real sure where this one came from, but anyway, um, well, it's not in its original condition either because it is now 12 volt instead of 6, and I'm pretty sure it was 12 volt when it came here. But anyway, um, this is just kind of a neat little conversation piece, basically. I mean, I doubt if I ever paint it up. I don't, you know don't know whether I ever will or not but you never can tell about me uh, anyway dad built our dad saw one at a show that had the two seat two steering wheel deal on it and my oldest boy at the time was uh, uh, two or not quite two so you know he enjoyed riding but he wanted to drive really bad and uh, every time he'd grab hold of the steering wheel he'd try and turn you into the pond on the tractor or something so dad set this thing up just for him so he would be able to steer the tractor, be able to play with the steering wheel all he wanted and not affect where the tractor was going. Um, now this is, uh, this is my favorite part of this little tractor. We're gonna start it up. Turn on the gas here. Now, throttles all the way back. Turn on the switch. And then we'll hit the starter. Ain't that easy? I mean, that's, that's about as easy as it gets right there. And it idles. You can almost count the fan blades as it's running there. So, yeah, that's... Uh, one of my more favorite parts of this one is just how easy it starts. Wet, dry, cold, hot, doesn't matter. It starts up just like that. And so here we have the 1950 Farmall C. My grandfather and great-grandfather bought this tractor brand new in April of 1951 though it is a 1950 model tractor. Um, I restored this thing. I was, uh, let's see, two years out of high school, I think. And I was an active uh, FFA alumni member and the local chapter was looking for a project. And I was going to do this anyway. I was going to restore this tractor back to original condition and uh, take it, you know, start showing it and all that good stuff. But anyway, the local FFA chapter was looking for a project. So I took them the tractor and uh, 
supervised the project, provided, of course, the money for the project, and so on and so forth. But uh, this was a running, working tractor at the time that I took it down there. Uh, as you could imagine, being as this was the main tractor for two farms from 1951 until, uh, well, he bought that 674 probably in 70, 1975, I think. So, you know, say 24 years of being worked to death, um, this little tractor then went was then kept operating and it was used to cultivate tobacco and it was uh you know used to put around and pull wagons and stuff like that but i never saw the cultivators come off of it until i took the cultivators off of it in 2002 maybe 2003 even i know we did the restoration on the tractor in 2003 so i probably took them off in 2003 um you know we've uh, so it's got now an old restoration on it and it's been used for the last 15 years too not hard but it's been out and done what it needed to do uh we had let's see we were in the middle of splitting firewood one time and the engine flew apart on the wood splitter that's where this Lovejoy coupler on the belt pulley comes from. We took, uh, this is a counter rotation shaft and the engine for the wood splitter was counter rotation also. So that's what we did. We took the uh, hydraulic pump off of that, or we took the engine off the wood splitter, took the hydraulic pump, made this plate to mount it to, and then that coupler we welded to another piece that fits to the spline on this shaft. Um, it uh, was kind of, yeah, anyway, it was a pinch decision. Um, at the time that happened, we did have the cub, which is also a counter rotation shaft, but I did not know how much better that would be. It runs at basically at engine speed is where this does not. So anyway, it would have made uh, the wood splitter run a little bit faster. Um, this 1965 Farmall 140. This actually belongs to my brother now. Um, he's going to come and get it and take it back to where he lives at. Anyway, this is the tractor that I learned to drive a tractor, or learned to drive on, period. I was three years old driving this tractor, pulling a hay wagon around the hay field. Um, kind of really don't like watching it go to him but anyway that's fine with me i get to keep my seat so uh yeah this uh this old girl here um i haven't had it running i'm not gonna bother trying to get it to run really but uh it was anyway kind of like that bee over there it was just that dependable it would always start it would always run it would always work and uh for as long as I've been around this poor little tractor, it had about five pounds of oil pressure, but it just kept on going. It needed to be, my dad bought this thing, I wanna think in 1980, which was before my time. Um, he bought it from somebody that he knew that was, I don't even know why, I think they had, uh, they were either got out of farming or were Something was going on. I don't remember the whole story, but anyway, I know the family also that owned this from new. Um, soon after he bought it, well, you can see the dent here, here, and here. And I thought there was a corresponding one in the fuel tank. Oh, right there. A corn crib fell on top of it. They had it parked in the parked in the corn under a corn crib at one of the other old uh, one of the farms we used to farm and the corn crib fell on it so anyway yeah um, this water tank on the side of this little tractor was uh, set up for a one row 
transplanter. So you could set out tobacco plants, tomato plants, cabbage, any anything that you would want to transplant into a field after uh, you know after it had been started in a greenhouse or a bed or something like that. Um, out front over here we have the rear end of 1939 Farmall H. Um, and then I have back at my mom's house sitting in under a big maple tree because that's where it got parked when, when the head gasket blew on it several years ago. A 1950 Farmall H. And I am debating on uh, now the 1950 Formal H, it has a set of dual steel wheels on it, which is an interesting addition. So I'm keeping those, but I'm debating on whether I want to use this rear end with the 39 serial number and rebuild that engine and put this tractor back together, or if I want to just rebuild the engine in that 1950 and be done with it. I, I think the 39H is a little bit, just a little bit cooler in my mind, but anyway, either way. And here we have a uh, McCormick hay press. I don't know the model of it or anything else. It was uh, <clears throat> a brush find and uh, it had been kept inside for a long time after they quit using it, but then probably about 10 years before we brought it home, it got shoved outside of a barn and left there to let weeds grow up around it and stuff. Um, this too, I don't know. The, uh, the mechanism is all free, basically. So, you know, all this stuff that makes it other than the engine, everything else is free on it and in theory it would all work other than it's rusty as can be um, it would need a whole lot of metal work to make it work again and i don't know i really love the idea of having one of these that works but i don't know that i'm going to be able to do it so that that one's up in the air um if you've paid any attention at all you've seen uh a video or two about this little guy right here. This is a Massey Ferguson 9 square baler. Um, we'll have to do another video on that too one of these days, but yeah. So yeah, guys, uh, we have a pretty good scattering of stuff around here. Um, they have, you know, yeah. I'm going to have videos about all this kind of stuff, all this stuff basically, hopefully of that one going away. But anyway, um, you know, we have uh, all kinds of little stuff that needs to be done around here and I need to get busy, so I'm going to have to get to it. Um, anyway, if you like the video, please comment, rate, and subscribe for more and uh, I'll get back to you after a while. Thanks for watching.